it's 2024. We want to actually get results and keep those results. And I'm going to tell you exactly how to do that. I'm going to give you a very simple, basic, but very effective blueprint for body transformation. So you can't fuck this up. Let's get into it. So here's what you don't want to do. Resolutions. The biggest mistake that people make going into the new year is making these lofty resolutions that are so far above your current level of reality and your current lifestyle that you're inevitably going to fall short. And when we fall short of these commitments, we feel like a failure. Drastic overhaul of habits hardly ever works. That's why 75 hard has such a high attrition rate. We have to meet ourselves where we're at. There is no shame in doing that. There is actually a lot of intelligence in doing that. Throw away these lofty commitments like, I'm gonna work out six days a week. I'm gonna start this new diet where I completely cut the thing that I love. Sugar, carbs. I'm gonna fast for seven days straight. You're gonna fail that. You're gonna fall off the wagon. What's the point? Let's do it differently. Another thing you wanna stay away from is any kind of diet. When I say diet, I mean an arbitrary list of foods or labels that we put on foods like good or bad. You don't need to abide by a menu to get body results. You don't need a meal plan. You don't even need a blueprint. We want to cultivate the habits that make fat loss a byproduct. We want to live a life where we don't have to transform our body again because we are the perpetual after photo. We want to stay away from making any rules. When we make extreme rules like can't eat carbs, can't eat out of my fasting window, can't eat sugar, can't eat that bad food, we've already moved away from balance because what happens when we break the rules? We feel a need to punish ourselves. For instance, the weekend where you eat the carbs you're not supposed to eat on the ketogenic diet or the weekend where you eat out of your fasting window. What happens Monday morning? You feel like you have to punish yourself for the bad thing you did or the rule you broke. No rules. We're just trying to get better over time. Let's talk about what people are actually struggling with because it's not fat loss. I know this may surprise you, but you are not actually struggling with losing weight. You're struggling with something deeper and fat loss is the surface level symptom of that deeper rooted struggle. And that deeper rooted struggle likely is a integrity gap. What you say you're going to do doesn't match your actions. What you say you live doesn't add up in the background. Integrity with self is one of the most important facets of how you live your life and how you want to see progress. It's easy to fall short of our word with others. I mean, you shouldn't, but when we do it with ourselves, when we tell ourselves, I'm going to do this thing, and then we don't go do that thing, we don't trust ourselves. Let me just give you an example. If you invite Stacy to go to Starbucks tomorrow at 4 p.m., and I mean, you have kids, this is a big deal. You got to either find someone to watch the kids during that time, if you're a single parent or if the other parent's working, or you got to bring them with you. So this is a big commitment for you. Anyway, 3.30 rolls around. You're not hearing from Stacy. She's not texting you back. You're like, oh, maybe she's on her way. Maybe she's driving. We're going to go anyway. Get the kids together. You show up at Starbucks at 3.58. Stacy's nowhere to be found. In fact, Stacy completely ghosts you. Doesn't follow through on that commitment she made. How likely are you to invite Stacy to meet you at Starbucks again? Not likely. And how do you view Stacy? A flake. A flake on her own word. How do you think we view ourselves when we say, I'm going to work out six times this week on New Year's Day and we work out three times or two times. A flake. A flake on our own word. Do we trust ourselves then to make even bigger commitments or to stick to that original commitment? No, we do not. And it makes us feel bad and it makes us feel unworthy and we've now lost our integrity with self. So instead, let's change our approach to build momentum. New mantra for 2024 is commit slowly, complete readily. Meaning make commitments that are only slightly above where you're at or where you're at currently. I recommend starting with the latter. For instance, instead of saying, I'm going to work out six times this week, say, I'm going to work out once this month. Now that may seem super attainable, kind of the point. We want to set ourselves up to over deliver on our own work. We have to build momentum and some semblance of trust so that we can actually cultivate a life where these things are just automatic. Set the bar unbelievably low. You're going to thank yourself later because what happens is you follow through on that small commitment. Now you have made room for a slightly bigger one. And then you follow through again on that one. So if you're having trouble following through on tracking your calories, just commit to tracking one meal this week. If you're having trouble hitting a protein goal, you have your overall protein goal for the day. But if you haven't yet hit that goal, then just make your commitment. I'm going to eat one high protein meal today. I'm going to go on one walk this month. Over time, as you complete these small commitments, then add a little bit higher of a commitment. So we want to keep it super simple and super basic. Speaking of basic, how do we get body results? There's four pillars to fat loss and body transformation. And those pillars are average a calorie range based on a calorie goal you've calculated using a very simple formula that I recommend, which is goal weight in pounds times 12. When you calculate that calorie goal, you now have a number 
number to shoot for. Average a range of that goal over time. So over the course of weeks, if your calorie number is 1800, for instance, if you're between 1600 and 2000 every day over time, you're averaging that calorie goal and therefore you will lose weight. Protein consumption is the second pillar. You can either aim for 100 plus grams, which is enough for most women, or you can take your goal weight in pounds, multiply that by 0.7. Either one works. The point is to make protein consumption a big part of your lifestyle. And we can only do that if we're incrementally hitting small goals and working our way up. So we have the calorie range, we have the protein goal. Step count, just start tracking your steps. See what you average over time, get a weekly total, and then just beat last week. Then once you've accrued a monthly average and a monthly total, beat it next month. The more you zoom out and view it from a month to month perspective instead of day to day, the less pressure you'll feel and the more results you'll get. Last pillar, number four, get stronger. That's the blueprint. Last piece of this holistic puzzle is gonna be the self-love and self-compassion piece. When I say compassion, we're gonna get a little deep here, gonna get uncomfortable, hang in with me. A lot of you have struggled with binging. We all have behaviors that we're not proud of or maybe there's some shame around it, some guilt. Cool, that's a part of being human and you're human, I'm human. I've done a lot of behavior modification myself because I had behaviors that were derailing my entire life. And let me tell you, those behaviors did not go away overnight. As bad as I wanted them to and as impatient of a person as I am, those behaviors did not dissipate overnight because they had persisted for years. So we do a lot of things out of self-soothing, escapism. Binging is one of those behaviors and I'm gonna use it as an example. If you struggle with binging, the only way you're gonna get out of this hole is compassion for self. Accept yourself, warts and all, pains and all, shortcomings and all, weaknesses and all. You're one of one. Self-love is a birthright. The moment you were born, you were worthy of love, especially from yourself. You are gonna accept self this year. And that is how all these modifications we're making are gonna stick. I hope this was helpful. At the end of the day, I just want you to win. Every time I get a message from a woman saying your 30 second reel or your podcast episode helped me change my life, I'm down 50 pounds simply from following your advice that you put on social media, I swell with happiness. That's why I do this. I know I'm a smart ass. I know sometimes I can seem like a dick, especially if someone tries to argue with me about fasting. Fasting is the dumbest trend since kids were eating Tide Pods or keto. Keto is bad. It's time we call out this dumpster fire of a diet for what it really is. It's all good. I'm working on it, but I will tell you this. I truly do want you to win. And I know that despite all this guidance and all the stuff that I put out, this shit can still be confusing and it's hard to know what to do when your weight stalls or you plateau or you hit a wall in your progress. That is what coaching is for. I have a coach, all my coaches have coaches. And if you wanna streamline your progress and take out the guesswork, we have a coaching program. You can find that link in the description of this video. Just apply and then we'll have a conversation via DMs on the social media platform that you leave in your application. And we'll jump on a strategy call with my success team and see if it's a good fit. If it is, great. If not, or if you're just not in a place to work with a coach right now, I get it. I want you to win. So I encourage you all to check out the Revenge Body Podcast. I also have a free Facebook group. These are just free resources that I put out to help you get from where you are to where you want to be in a very simple, basic, evidence-based way. Appreciate you all watching. You're going to crush it. And let me know if I can support you. I do answer all my DMs on Instagram and Facebook. So shoot me a message. We'll figure it out. Emotional Support Viking, out.